In the last video, we have talked about text, and normally we call it as a string. Now in this video, let's try to focus more on string and let's see what we can do. So first of all, I will get into the Python mode and I will clear the screen. And now let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to work with a string. So of course I will use my name just to promote myself. Uh, okay, maybe I'm self obsessed. doesn't matter. So we got Naveen here and then when I enter, you got the name, the string itself. But what if I want two words? Of course, you can put that into a string in single quote. You can put Naveen Telisco. It works, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong. But what if I got two different string? One is Naveen, one is Telisco. So again, there are two string now. So this is one string and this is one string. So when you do that, what happens? Will it give you bad words? I mean, will it give you errors or you will get the output? So when you run this, it works. So basically what it's doing is it says, okay, I got two strings here. One is this, one is this written side by side. So maybe my job here is to concatenate it. And that's what it is doing. It is basically concatenating these two things and things are working fine. Uh, that's cool. In fact, I should have given a space there just to have this type of output, but you got the point, right? So when you got two strings like this, you can simply keep them side by side and it will work. But let's say, let's say I got a name variable and in this name variable, I got my name. And when I say enter, okay, so I got a name variable in which I have an, uh, my name, Naveen. And now I want to print Naveen Telisco. So Naveen is the name, I know. But what if I want to write Telisco here? What do you think? Will it work? It worked before, before when you had a string literal. So this is called st a string literal. So when you got two string literals, there's no issue. But now we got a variable and a string literal what will happen? Now, maybe this time Python will not be happy with you. Python will say, what are you doing? This is not how you write a variable and a string together. And that's what it says, you know, this name makes sense. What is this telisco after that? It is a invalid syntax. Now, how do we solve this? Pretty simple. You can simply go back here name and then you can say telisco. It's just that you have to tell your intentions here. When you have a variable and a string literal, you tell your intention. See, my intention here is to concatenate this two. So Python says, in that case, give me a plus operator. This plus operator is actually a smart operator because when you give numbers, it will add two numbers. When you give a string, it says, okay, I can't add them. I can concatenate them. And that's what it's doing here. Okay, and when you say enter, you can see it came side by side. It's just that I wanted to give a space here and now it works. So that's how basically you do the concatenation of a string literal and a variable. So now let's work with string as a collection of characters. Okay, what I mean by that. So what I will do is first of all, I will clear this. Okay, let's keep it empty. And now I want to have a text as a variable. And inside this, let me have a value as telisco. Now this Telisco word has seven characters, right? And uh, I will say enter. So basically if I try to print text, it will print all the seven characters, that's a string. But what if I don't want to print the entire set of characters or I can say that I, want to, I don't want to print the entire string. How do you print a particular character here? So let's say I want to just get T out of it, or maybe I want to get a E out of it. How will you do it? So let's take text. And then you use something called a square bracket here. Now this is kind of a list, which we are going to see later. But at this point, imagine if you have a string like this, it has seven characters, as you can see on the screen, and each character will be having some number, right? So we can count. So example, let's say if, if I have a desk here and in the, on this desk, I have got multiple objects, I can count, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how we are counting, right? And same goes for this telisco, one to seven. But in programming, we start the number by zero. Okay, so here, this the first character is zero index. That's a new word now. Now index, we refer to a particular location. So here, the T is at zero index. Then we got E, we got one index. L is two index. That's how it works. So the O is the sixth index. But yeah, when you call them as what location, you can say 
first or seventh but when you say index it is zero to six okay and if you are new to the world of programming this is where people do struggle to work to work with the index numbers but don't worry you will get used to it okay there's no easy way of saying this but you will get used to it okay so you will say uh i want something at this zeroth index which is the first position when, when you say enter you got t okay now if you want to get let's say some other location let's say if i say three now what is your guess so or not guess it should be accurate right you can see on the screen it is you that's right it was a guess for me because i can't see the screen that's post production which you can see on the screen okay now if i say six then of course it will be o but what if if i say seven and that's where python is not happy python says hey stay in your limit i mean it says string index out of range because you're going outside the range. The range is 0 to 6. That's what the text here. And when you say 7, basically you're looking for the 8th location, this which is not there. So it says string index out of range, index error. And it's important for developers to read the errors as well. Just because something went wrong, you will say, hey, let me just check the code again. No, first check what the error is. Okay, now I know I'm I'm out of bound or out of range. I can just come back and, okay, I will fetch six. That's what we can do. Now, this is how you go with the range. But can we try a negative range here? So let's say uh, I want to try with minus one. So guess what it could be in your mind. And now let's see. Uh, if I enter, it says, oh, Okay, now that's weird. Why it says O for minus 1? Because see, if you try to understand the normal range, the T starts at 0. So before this, there should be empty, right? It should say out of range. It's not doing that. It is for minus 1, it is saying O. It's because the string in Python, it allows you to have 0 to the plus index, like 6 here. Also, it can allow you to have minus index, which is minus 1, minus 2, as you can see on the screen. And it is helpful. You know why? Because when I was doing with this 6, text 6, in my mind, I was still calculating. Uh, even if I know this, I have done this multiple times. But still, somewhere in my mind, I have to be very accurate with what is the index for this O. And that is 6. But let's say if I don't want to get confused, I want to get the last character. I can simply say minus 1. It, it will give me last character. And then minus 2 is second last, minus 3 is third last. And that's how it goes. So it is helpful in that scenario. Now, if you say text of minus 7, it will be T because that's the first character. But again, if you try to do minus 9, it, it will say the same thing. You are going out of range. Okay, so let me print text again. Now, let's try something else. I want to print the, let's say, USKO. I just want to print USKO. Now, if you want to do that, I can simply say text. And from this Telisco, I want to fetch the last four characters. That means I want to skip the first, the second, the third, which means index 0, index 1, index 2. So I want to skip this 3. So I have to start from 3 and then I have to end where. Okay, so end should be the last value which you want plus 1. So the last value which I want here is USKO. O is 6. I have to say 7. Enter and you can see we got USKO. Now why 7 if you are wondering is just that it will exclude that particular value. Okay, it will include 3, it will exclude, exclude 7. Let's say I want to get the first 3 characters, now you help me. So it will be text and you might be thinking how you're helping me. That's all uh, mind power. You think that I will get to know in the past because I'm recording now. Okay, such a weird example. Anyway, come back. So if I say 0 and I have to start with 0, right? Because I want to include T. So we are trying to print T, E, L. So 0, 2, I have to end where? So I need to get L also, which is at index 2. So if I say 3, it will take T, E, L. Let's say I want to print from L. So L is starts with 2 and then I have to end at 7, right? But even if you say 9, there's no issue because you're starting with L. And when you say 9, it simply says, okay, go till the end. I don't care where it is. Even if you say 100, it will end at O. That also means you can skip the last part. I mean, if you just want to print at the end, why to even have a higher number? Just say empty, it will go to the end and your job is done. And not just for the end part, you can also define for the start part. Let's say I want to end at 3. I want to start from 0, but end at 3. You can do this. So Python is fun, right? Uh, let me clear this and let me print text again. What else we can do here? 
Let's say I want to print L U S K O, but I want to change the T E L to be capital and U S K O to be small. Okay, so first of all, I can assign directly a new value to it. Example, something like this and enter. This will work. If I say text, there is no problem. The new text itself is T E L capital and U S K O small. Now, why it is working is because you are changing the value of a variable and you can change the value of a variable. Nothing wrong with that, right? But now what I wanted to do is, okay, let me just get back to Telisco. And now if you say text, it's Telisco. Now what I want to do is I just want to change the existing string. Let me repeat. I want to change the existing string and make the first three letters capital. If I want to do that, I, maybe I can say text and then, okay, first of all, I just want to get some extra space here. I will say text and then I can specify from 0 to 3, which is the first three characters uh, because 3 is excluding. I can say equal to T-E-L. Now, if we can do this, that means the first three letters will be changed to T-E-L, capital T-E-L. US keywords should remain same. Because we are trying, we are trying to change the string itself. And if you say enter, it is giving you an error. It says you can't do that. String object, which is still object, does not support item assignment. Basically, you can't change the existing string. Okay, that's cool. Um, so this is one thing you have to remember: you can't change the existing string. You can change the value of a variable, but you can't change the ex existing string. Now. If you are thinking both are same, right? No, I, you, this will make much more sense once we talk about references, objects, it will make sense. Okay, apart from this, I want to show you one more thing. That, and I'm um, in fact, two more things and then we are, we are going to end this. Uh, let's say if you want to find the, the length of a string, you can use the len function. Again, we have not talked about functions at this point, but just imagine there is something in the world which will take your text and or your data and find the length of it. That's what it's doing here. Uh, maybe I also want to print something. Maybe I want to write a poem which is not in one line. Because see, if you say text is equal to, and if you say my name is Naveen Reddy, welcome to Telisco. Okay, by default I'm saying T is E capital. So if I do this, I'm writing this in one line, right? And maybe I want to print this in two lines. So one thing you can do is you can put a slash n here. And then when you try to print text, not like this, but if you try to print text with a function, it will print on two different lines. So we have to put this slash n here for the new line. So this will get printed. And then this will print a new line on which you are printing welcome with a disco. There's another way of doing this. I'll clear this. I will say text is equal to you can use triple double quotes. Okay, that's weird. But uh, and then you can say enter and you can say my name is Naveen. Welcome to Telisco. And when you do this, you have to make sure that you end with triple double quotes. And when you say enter, it worked. And if you try to print text, of course, it will print in this fashion. But if you print in a text or you using a print function, this is what it does. Okay, so you want to use this syntax or the syntax which I've used before, your choice. So yeah, that's about string in Python. See you in the next video.